everybody. Ah. Why is this so heavy? Hey, Mina. Um, I'm so excited that you finished the book last night and that you loved it. My friend Jenny also finished it last night and wrote about it this morning. Uh, yay for book clubs or into loser. Oh, well, we can definitely reset. Um, I have to tell you, writing the book was really fun, but getting reviews for the book has been even more fun. <laughs> uh, it's very exciting to hear what everyone thinks about the characters you made. I didn't, uh, uh you know, oops. Oosh, almost knocked you guys down. Sorry about that. That was an accident. Day. It was an accident. Hey, Cindy. Cindy's already read it, so, you know, it's a little different. She's just now reading the, I guess, the version that is post edit, if you will. Good morning. Hey, Anya. Anya, are you new? <laughs> Got her. Got her. Pew, pew. <laughs> so new. So new. That's funny, honey. That's funny. Well, I read while well, I edited, and then I read my Kindle print. Oh, look at you, fancy lady. Wow, Cindy's read the book like three times. Shots fired! Uh, the bus just whipped past our house, and they had to back up. Whoa. Uh, the next part of Broadway... Well, isn't it crazy, Noah? Did you watch the one that I posted last night, Noah? The one that I tagged you in? What? What, what? Oh, what's crazy? The Broadway Spotted story Noah has been following on bated breath. Oh. And said the next part is needed now. He's very excited to hear more about it. I, I forgot a lot of stuff, and then last night I Googled something. Morning, AC. So, last night, um... I won't go any ahead at all because, you know, not a lot of people aren't here, but, um, basically, okay, I hear you. You need, you need to be clean today. It needs to be clean. So I, Secret Fiance asked me during the last video why I didn't want to give them the screenshots and I couldn't remember. I was like, why didn't I want to give them the screenshots of that other than, then it would, um, possibly, what do we think? Where's there? No, what? Oh, it's right here in the front. Okay. Um, you know, like I, I literally was like, I can't remember why I specifically didn't want to give them the screenshots. Right. And then I was like, I have a friend who has been DMing me since I started doing this, um, series and like going like, Oh my gosh, remember this? Oh my gosh, remember this? Which has been interesting because it like triggered things in my mind. Right. Cause he was there in real time but he didn't know a lot about this stuff. And so when I posted the last video, he said, oh my God, the, and said the real names of the two women that it's about. And I was like, yeah, crazy time, right? Do you remember the name of her account? And he was like, was it like B-Way XOXO? And I was like, no, that doesn't sound right. I don't think that's it. And I Googled that just to, see, to make sure that I wasn't crazy and no, that wasn't it. There's not a thing with that. And so I was like, man, what was it? And then I actively remembered an exact tweet that she tweeted so I googled the tweet that she said because it was very specific like there's no no way that it could be posted anywhere else because it's not like like it like if there was something that I posted on Broadway spotted like I would say in the examples like um Sutton Foster was seen coming out of 42nd Street Studios maybe she's going to be in XYZ anybody can know that right because it's out in the public like she's walking out of a real place you know what I mean but the thing that this person was posting the thing that I remembered was so incredibly specific that I knew that was going to be the only reference to it around, right? So I Googled that specific thing that I'm not going to say on here because it will get me properly banned from here. It really is, Noah. It, that's exactly what it was like. You are 100% correct. That's exactly what it was like. 
Um, and and I, I Googled the, the thing that she posted. Not only did it bring up what her account was, which I'm not gonna say on here, because again, I don't wanna get in trouble, but it also brought up something I had forgotten, which was that the person she tweeted about sued Twitter to, and I'm gonna talk about this in the next video, to um, release her identity for defamation and slander. Um, and they, so it was in every news source. We're talking New York Times, Daily News, all of these things. And I was like, I totally forgot that. And I forgot that the reason I didn't want my name going to that other person is because I didn't want to get pulled into the lawsuit. I was like, I'm a good person. Why would I not give him my screenshots? And it was because I didn't want to be named as a witness in the lawsuit. And I was the only one who knew who she was. So I was like, I'm going to tell you who it is, but you cannot include me in this lawsuit. And that's why I couldn't remember at the time. Like I was like, when we were talking about it last night, I was like, why didn't I want to give it to him? Yeah, no, it was a crazy time. Like what a weird life to live through. Like, oh, so strange. I know. I know. Anya. That's the thing. Like sometimes I think when I tell people that I lived like a crazy life, they're like, okay, everyone lived through things. You're exaggerating. I'm like, no, seriously, I was not exaggerating. <laughs> Definitely not exaggerating. I'm still friends with the person who, who sued Twitter though, actually not like good friends, but like we're, we've been in contact and in touch since then. He's very sweet um, and very talented and did not deserve the, the slander that she put out about him. And, you know, it, it was a ridiculous thing that she said that was very, very not true. His career is okay? great. Yeah, no, he, 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 um, by doing the lawsuit thing where he was like, I'm going to sue for her thing. Like everyone was like, oh, well, if he's willing to go through all of this, it must really be false. And he's, he's had a very nice career since then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think everyone else just assumed, like, because gossip columns have been a part of entertainment since the beginning of entertainment time, I think everyone else just assumed they had to just grin and bear it. All right, bye. See you later, Noah. Um, but he did not grin and bear it. He did not grin and bear it. And that's good, right? I mean, it's for the best, right? Unrelated, but Sasha, I want to share your book with the women. Oh, please, please do that. Yes, that would be so lovely, Shelly. That would be absolutely wonderful if you would do that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I hope not. How did you make your foam free coffee? With this little thing right here. This is the thing that makes the foam. It's the little, like, uh, you know, it centrifugal foam. Kind of it does. It, like, has a little, a little whisk in there, and it goes, Woo! That's what it does. That's what it does. All right, this one is for you. Whoa. All right, boom, boom, boom. Let's go over to book club land. You guys want to see the dill? Look at this dill. Isn't that freaking wild? This dill doesn't know what to do with itself. It is so big. We need to cut it today. We need to dry it and we need to use it because it is out of control. We can smoothie dance. Let's do it. Woo smoothies. Smoothie dance. I haven't even had my first sip of coffee. Smoothie is going to be extra important for us to have today because it could, no, I'm not going to say that joke here. Um, 
because what? there's a line from Monsters Inc. when you when you whenever you say because and then the the other guy goes it could let in a draft or someone says it could let in a draft and he says no it could let in a child um but smoothies don't let in a child um what i was gonna say is we good timing liz are going to a taylor swift themed soul cycle ride this afternoon well Whoa. early afternoon so we need all the energy we can get from a smoothie and a good breakfast so that we can go and pedal our butts off to taylor swift it is fun it's called taylor fridays and it's at noon and we get to exercise and they can only play taylor swift what are they called I'll kick him. Okay. Yeah. How how full is this class? I don't know. I haven't checked since we signed up. How full is it when we signed up? I signed up like literally three minutes after it went live, so this like there were like cool. five people. Probably. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be full. I mean it's the middle of a work day. So maybe not. Not everybody has the schedule we have. That's also in Santa Monica. It's true. Uh, people don't work it's going to be so fun taylor motivates me yeah taylor's great i agree obviously that's where we're going um yes that is a great question everybody roll call if you are a legal adult feel free to say the state you're located in yeah we do that too liz more or less <laughs> are you new <laughs> texas i knew that washington insanity colorado washington texas new jersey obviously we know becca and liz are in new york nice is in california Lil uh, libby's also in texas okay more californias obviously we have rosie i don't think rosie's in here right now because she has an appointment this morning with her dog but she's also here in California. She lives in Orange County, um, Mississippi, Illinois. I did try to convince Liz to move to California yesterday. It's true. She was complaining about the snow. I said, move to California. Problem solved, right? Delaware. You would move to Delaware to get away from the snow? No. Thank you for this. From Delaware. Is anyone from Delaware? Okay. Yes, we have earthquakes, but like, it's we not a dis- We're going to die in a huge earthquake someday. Okay, but it's not the same. Like, earthquakes don't happen as often as snow, first of all. Not by far. Um, well, one day one of them will engulf us. Okay, but snow could engulf them. Mm, probably not. Uh, probably. Snowpocalypse <laughs> is getting worse and worse. <laughs> earthquakes are not that often. They're not frequent, and the ones that happen most often are so little you don't even notice. Like... About three yeah. weeks ago. But the, like, a blizzard isn't probably gonna kill you. So well, neither is earth. We had an earthquake down. three weeks ago and we were on spin bikes so we didn't even notice. That's how yes. little it was. Yeah, I'm saying someday in the near future, in our lifetime probably. Are you trying to convince me to leave California right now? What's no, happening I'm here? Just saying, I'm just saying, I, I feel like. Scorpions. Like we live in Los Angeles. We don't have scorpions. You no have to go. There's no scorpions where we live. That's the desert. Yeah, we don't live in the desert. We live in Los Angeles. Someday we'll be desert people. Why? Oh, I don't know. Like you now, just blanketly decided that without a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll be desert people. No, we won't. This is a really good smoothie, babe. No, thanks, Cindy. Um, I can never move back to New York. I can't do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Can't do it, won't do it. My body won't let me anymore. Too cold. Um, not even the cold. The cold is part of it, but like ever since leaving, anytime I go back, I notice a discernible shift in the way that I just am there and I immediately tense up and like it's like being being in like a fugue state or something like I don't know I just get intense and and I I like I can't focus properly and I'm like 
I forget to eat because I'm so like, blah, blah, blah. yeah, it is. It's kind of like, um, it's, it's not about the say, it's just about the environment that I was in when I was there. And I think it just was too much for me at the end that my brain, anytime I go there is like, protect yourself. It's going to be crazy. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So no New York for Sasha, not healthy, not healthy. When I went back there to be there for a month after living in Florence. I was like, oh, this is not great. I should go back to Florence. And I came here instead, but Florence was great. Ugh. Babe, you wanna move to Florence? Florence, yeah? Firenze. Well, no, by the way, I can't even say the name of her, probably not. I think it would be very isolating for me. That's probably true. <laughs> Can we at least go visit? That's not isolating, right? Visit. Yeah, visiting is not isolating. No, you're not. <laughs> you wish you had found an Italian boy. <gasps> Don't be so mean to yourself. Don't be so mean to me. Yeah, you sound bummed. I'm only bummed about Italy, not about you. Okay. Aww. Don't be sad. I can't read if I know you're sad. All right. Okay, I'm not sad. <gasps> that was a fake not sad! <laughs> Do you need a hug? <laughs> no. Oh no! Sad! <laughs> Don't be sad! Don't be sad! Okay, let's read Land of Stories. Things are getting crazy. <clears throat> Chapter 11. We're making our way through this. We really do have to pick our next book, you guys. We're almost halfway. Nobody hates you. You know what I do hate? Can I tell you what I do hate? This piece of hair that always wants to go out instead of down. Should I just chop it off? It won't grow, so it doesn't get longer. That's who I hate right there. This piece of hair. <clears throat> Chapter 11 is A Mirrored Escape. After a thorough inspection of all the mirrors in the center kingdom castle, Froggy and his mysterious young companion discovered that the castle was as empty as the mirror dimension itself. Judging by all the damaged furniture and broken artwork, the literary army had swept the castle and taken all the servants to the northern kingdom during their invasion. That's true, Liz, that did happen. But we're happy to inform. I'm Penelope, so. Most concerning of all, however, was how little Froggy recognized of his former home. They peered into the chambers where he used to sleep, the dining room where he used to eat, and the library where he'd spent hours each day reading, but nothing sparked the tiniest inkling of familiarity. I know I used to live here, but no matter how many times I remind myself, it still seems like the home of a stranger, Froggy said. True, Becca. Well, where else could your friends be hiding? The little girl asked. Froggy tried to think of an alternate hiding spot, but he had a difficult time remembering the names of other locations altogether. 
Well, let's search the village outside the castle, he said. Perhaps they're hiding somewhere less conspicuous, like one of the shops or farms. What are their names? I forgot to ask. Froggy opened his mouth to respond, but the words never emerged. Oh, I suppose I forgot, he said with a deep sigh. Oh, but I'll recognize them the moment that I see them. They've got strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes, and freckles. The boy has chubby cheeks, and the girl always wears her hair neatly behind a headband. Or at least, that's how they looked when they were twelve. I know they've matured since then, but I can't picture it. It's all right, the little girl reassured him. How many twins can there be who match that description? We'll find them soon enough. A new cluster of mirrors manifest in the distance and they hurried to inspect them. Froggy and the little girl checked all the homes, shops, bakeries, taverns, barns in the central kingdom village, but they were just as empty as the castle. They were certain the literary army had rounded up all the villagers too, but an unexpected noise told them otherwise. Froggy and the little girl followed the sound of sniffling to a mirror that hung inside a small cottage. They peered inside and found a short, frumpy looking woman with curly red hair and a large nose. She looked at her reflection in the mirror like it was someone she despised. The woman tried smoothing the wrinkles on her forehead, flattening the bags under her eyes, and stretching her double chin as if the skin on her face were made of clay. Naturally, the adjustments never lasted, and the woman cried harder after each failed attempt. Froggy stayed out of sight so he wouldn't frighten the woman, but the little girl was drawn to her like a magnet, desperate to help. Why are you crying? she asked. The woman screamed at the strange little girl appearing in the mirror. She quickly turned to look over her shoulder, expecting to find the little girl standing behind her. When she realized that the little girl was only a reflection, the woman screamed again. How did you get in here? She asked. Are you a ghost? No, just cursed, the little girl replied. I've been trapped inside the mirror for a long time, and from the looks of it, so have you. But, 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 well, what's that supposed to mean? The woman asked. Well, I saw the way you were looking into the mirror just now, the little girl said. You looked at your own face with such hatred and heartbreak. You nearly hurt yourself trying to change your appearance with your hands. If you dislike your looks to the point of hating and harming yourself, I'd say you're just as cursed and trapped in the mirror as I am. The woman was still shocked to be speaking with a reflection, but even more overwhelmed to be analyzed by one. Tears formed in her eyes again, but this time from embarrassment. You've caught me at a very vulnerable moment, my dear, the woman said. What's your name? I don't know, the little girl said. All I know is what I see, and someone should never be so distraught over something they can't control. Well, I agree, but it isn't right to make judgments over one moment of weakness either, the woman said. My appearance has always given me grief, but that isn't the only reason I'm unhappy. My whole family was recently captured by a terrible army and taken to the Northern Kingdom. I was crying because I miss them dearly and I'm, I'm worried sick. Then why were you trying to change your looks? The little girl asked. Because I desperately want to save them, but my looks are holding me back. The woman confessed. I'm the only one in our village who escaped the army and there are others like me in towns nearby. I believe if we joined together, we could create a plan to rescue our loved ones. However, I'm afraid no one will take me seriously because of my appearance. I have a lifetime of experiences that validate that fear. Froggy was certain the woman's situation would be far too complicated for a little girl's expertise. But even in this dilemma, the little girl knew exactly what advice to give. No one ever changed the world by being beautiful, she said. That's not actually true, but we'll let that go. If you want to make a difference, you can't let something as trivial as appearance get in your way. A daisy doesn't need the rose's permission to bloom. Neither do you. Well, I may not need permission, but I do need support, the woman argued. I can't fight an army on my own. I need others to join me. I'm afraid they'll only see my looks and they won't listen to my words. I'm afraid they'll only laugh at my hopes of rescuing my loved ones. The little girl placed her hands on her hips and stared at the woman with the confidence of someone twice her age. Only idiots listen with their eyes, she said. If people don't hear your words, then shout them. If people silence you, then write your message with fire. Demanding respect is never easy, but if something you love is at stake, I'd say it's worth the price. Besides, if you can't get villagers to take you seriously, you'll never defeat an army. Sometimes we're meant to face the demons at home we know, so we know how to fight the demons abroad. The little girl had waited years to give someone that advice, but it appeared to do the trick. As if some, 
Sudden electric charge had run through the woman's body. She stood taller and straighter, and her eyes beamed with determination. You're right, child, she said. With all the energy I've wasted moping in front of the mirror, I could have accomplished great things by now. Well, I I'm going to stop moping at once and get to work. The woman was so re-energized that her hands trembled as she gathered her coat and her hat. She was so eager to begin that she completely forgot she wasn't alone. Only when the woman had one foot out the door did she remember the little girl was still standing in the mirror. Thank you for the encouragement, the woman said. Whatever curse you're under, I hope someone can free you from the mirror. You've certainly freed me. The woman left her cottage and hurried to the next village at a determined pace. Froggy was floored by the little girl's counseling abilities, and he applauded her, and they journeyed away from the cottage mirror. That was quite the motivational speech, he said. With just a few words, you may have changed that woman's life forever. Boy, I sure wish our paths had crossed when I was younger. I could have used the same inspiration. Suddenly, the cottage mirror behind them started to glow. It became brighter and brighter until it shined with the power of the sun. Froggy and the little girl both shielded their eyes from the strange phenomenon. What's happening? He asked. I don't know, she said. I've never seen the mirror do that before. Rays of light shot out from the mirror like ribbons and wrapped around the little girl's wrists, ankles, and waist. The light pulled her closer and closer to the mirror until her body was pressed against the glass. Just when Froggy didn't think she could go any farther, the little girl passed through the plate of glass as if it were a sheet of water. She collapsed on the cottage floor and all the light faded. Froggy tried to follow her, but the glass between the worlds became solid. You're on the other side, Froggy exclaimed. You've been freed. But how? She asked in disbelief. What broke the spell? Froggy thought about it, but it was a mystery to him too. There was only one possible conclusion that he could come up with. Maybe it's just like the woman said, he suggested. Perhaps the key to freeing yourself from the mirror is to free someone else first. The little girl got to her feet, but when she turned back to the mirror, she wasn't a little girl anymore. She was a beautiful middle-aged woman with long raven hair now standing before Froggy. I'm so old, she said. Why have I aged so much? This must be the age you were when you went inside the mirror, Froggy said. The longer you were trapped, the more you faded into a little girl. The woman stared at her reflection, and after a moment it astonished her. She looked into her own eyes as if she were seeing a long-lost friend. Suddenly, a wave of memories illuminated her mind like a swarm of fly fireflies flying into a dark cave. I remember, she said. I remember where I was born. I remember where I grew up. I remember all the places I lived. I remember the faces of my loved ones, and I remember my name. What is it? Froggy asked. Evely, she gasped. Her face quickly filled with shame upon the discovery. It was so overwhelming that she had to take a seat on a small stool. Why the long face? This should be a happy moment for you. Because it wasn't the only name I've ever had, Evely said. She walked around the cottage and recited her memories as they came to her, as if she was narrating a film she saw behind her eyelids. When I was very young, I was kidnapped by an evil enchantress and forked to work as her slave. When I was deeply in love with a young man named Mira who tried to rescue me, the enchantress caught Mira and imprisoned him inside the magic mirror as punishment. I was devastated and quickly planned my own escape from her. I poisoned the enchantress and ran away, dragging Mira's mirror to the forest behind me. And then I made a decision that turned me into a monster. Froggy laughed. I have a hard time believing that. No, I mean it, Evely said. I was so heartbroken over Mira. I had a witch cut out my heart and turn it into stone. It made all the pain go away, but it also turned me into an irrational, unsympathetic, and cruel woman. I devoted the rest of my heartless life to freeing Mira from the mirror. I married a king in hopes of using his resources, and I tried to kill my stepdaughter. The world found out and hated me for it, and I became known throughout the kingdoms as the Evil Queen. The name should have sent shivers down Froggy's spine, but he remained completely unaffected. He listened to Evely's memories as if the story were one he'd never been told, completely unaware that the two of them shared some of these memories. 
Years later, I tried freeing Mira using the wishing spell, but by the time I collected all the items the spell needed, Mira had faded into nothing but a reflection, and he died in my arms just a few moments after being freed. There was a big battle at the time. Soldiers came and found me in an abandoned castle. Cannons were being blasted outside. The castle began to crumble. The magic mirror crashed over me, and I've been trapped inside ever since. Evelyn covered her eyes and cried, as if the story she had been watching had come to a tragic ending. And what about your heart? Froggy asked. Is it still made of stone? Evelyn placed a hand over her chest and gasped. No! I can feel it beating! She said, how is this possible? What sort of magic could restore someone's heart? I understand completely, Froggy said with a smile. It's called a second chance. A lifetime of sorrow, a mere dimension has granted you opportunity to start over. I don't deserve a second chance, Evely said. After all the pain I've caused over the years, I deserve to spend eternity inside a prison cell. Perhaps the chance is for redemption. He suggested. You are too late to free Mira, but that doesn't mean it's too late for everyone else. There are plenty of people who feel trapped in the mirror, and they could all use the advice that you've been storing. But why me? Evely asked. Surely there are much more suitable candidates than an evil queen. Well, maybe not, Froggy said. Maybe you were meant to go through all that pain and heartbreak so that you could save others from their own. Maybe the evil queen is just one chapter in your life and maybe not the whole story. Maybe the world has dreamed bigger plans for you than you dreamed for yourself. Tears filled Evelie's eyes as she thought it over. It was difficult to accept the kindness from a world she thought was so cruel. I should take my own advice and stop feeling sorry over things I can't control, she said. Thank you for, Claire, what are you doing here? Sorry. Thank you for guiding me through it. As much as, much as I would like to continue looking for your friends, I suppose I'm quite useless to you from this side of the glass, so good luck to you, whoever you are. Evely kissed the mirror near Froggy's cheek and left the cottage, taking her first steps towards a new beginning. Once she was gone, Froggy left the mirror and wandered into the darkness of the mirror dimension. What a nice lady, he said to himself. I wonder what friends she was talking about. Oh, that's exciting, Claire. The next one is kind of long, so we'll have to do it tomorrow because um, we do have that uh, Taylor Swift Soul Cycle ride today. But we really are almost at the halfway point, so we really do um, need to pick a new book, you guys. Like, it's, it's important. So um, right after this, I'm going to post... A video where we can make suggestions or whatever um and we can all debate it in the comments and, and get like a list of who wants to read excuse me at the hiccups what the most um we gotta think about it we really gotta we gotta do that um i need to do that today tiffany i need to do that you sent an option to the book club chat oh did you when did, like today or recently or i need to look at that um, I need to, I need to download the last like three today so that I can upload them. I will do that today. Um, we also have roll for slime tonight, you guys. That's exciting. Roll for slime at four o'clock during the live. Okay. So brand new. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, roll for slime is at 4 PM today, Pacific time. Um, I need to go make that list and post the agenda. That'll be cool. Um, Oh my gosh, hey Amber, welcome to book club. Welcome to book club. Um, I need to look, Becca, I'm not sure. We might have both. I think some people want one. I took all my old charms and hid them in my slime. It is fun, right, Tiffany? It's so fun. That's what made the Arbitrary Canary slime so much fun. It's kind of like an I Spy game. Um, all right, I'm gonna go so that I can go eat breakfast and do the Taylor Swift ride and get back in time to shower and set up for Roll for Slime Live. So I will see you all later. Bye guys. Oops.